Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the installment of Scott Selections here with winnersofwinners.com for Wednesday, August 12th. Before we get into today's play, I a quick recap of what happened yesterday. We ended up picking up a nice, easy winner with the Spurs plus three. We ended up getting a great night on the uh, – great line, I should say, on the overnight. As we got the Spurs at plus three, they closed roughly minus four and a half. It was announced that Harden was not going to play, and I figured uh, – I know when I went through the breakdown yesterday, my logic was that the Spurs need this win in order to stay into the playoff race. And Houston really was kind of waving the flag when they decided not to use Harden in this game to save him for the second out of back-to-back. Spurs ended up being plus three and minus 108. Easy winner. They won by double digits. So we're going to be looking for another easy winner here in the NBA on Wednesday. But it's going to be kind of weird because we're going to be back in the Rockets here as they end up taking on the Pacers. And the best line available right now is at minus eight at plus 100 on Fox Bet. First of all, it's minus eight and a half at minus 110 on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Yet Foxbet has minus eight at plus 100. So you're getting extra, you're saving 10 cents and you get half a point. So I'm going to take that for the value. Now, a couple of reasons why I like the Rockets minus eight. At first glance, you might be saying to yourself, well, the Pacers have been pretty good this season, especially in the bubble uh, with the emergence of TJ Warren. So why are the Rockets playing this big of a spread on the second night of back to back? And why do you like them? And the reason why I like Houston is because of the fact that the Pacers have pretty much put the writing on the wall that they are not going to care much about this game whatsoever. Indiana's already announced that TJ Warren, their superstar of the bubble, is going to be out for this game. Malcolm Brogdon's questionable with a neck issue. Oladipo's questionable. Miles Turner's questionable. Seems like most of them are not going to be playing in this game. And especially with TJ Warren out, I'm not really sure where their offense is supposed to come from. I think that if Brogdon, who has had some injury issues over the course of the season, and now he has a neck issue, I wouldn't surprise to see him play very, very limited minutes or not at all. Oladipo also had, uh, had some serious leg issues over the past couple uh, past year or so. Now he's back. I wouldn't be surprised to see them potentially rest him for the playoffs. Miles Turner hasn't been that much of an impactful player in the bubble. But Houston is going to be using Harden. Uh, everyone else should be playing with the exception of Westbrook, as he will be missing this game. Daniel House is questionable, but if he does not play, I do like Macklemore joining the starting lineup in that spot. So I think that's really much of a game changer. But Houston – has a lot of momentum, has a lot of motivation, I should say, for this game. Even though the loss yesterday officially made it impossible for them to catch Denver for the three spot, they are still only one game ahead of Oklahoma City for the four. Uh, and if, I know that that would mean that they would be playing each other in the first round, but that also could impact who they'd be playing in the second round of a playoff matchup. And they're only a game and a half ahead of Utah. Utah can still catch the Rockets. So there is a chance that uh, the Rockets could fall from four to six, hypothetically. Of course, if they end up winning this game, they'll end up uh, being guaranteed to be in the 4-5 matchup on either side, which means they end up playing the Lakers in the second round. But I think you can agree that if you can avoid being the 6, having to play the Nuggets and then the Clippers, I think you'd much rather stay in the 4-5. So for that reason, the Rockets are going to do whatever they can to stay ahead of the Jazz uh, in the 4-5 or the 6, if you know what I mean. So for that reason, Houston should be very motivated to put together a solid performance in this matchup. Meanwhile, Indiana – the uh, the Eastern Conference is kind of a crapshoot as it is. Indiana's one game ahead of Philly for the, for the five. They're one game behind Miami for the four. But that doesn't really matter. But the main point is that Philadelphia has a bunch of backups in because Simmons and Embiid are injured, and it doesn't really seem like the Sixers are going to be able to catch Indiana. So Indiana's kind of wrapped into the 4-5 matchup, which explains why they're considering benching or giving rest to Brogdon, Oladipo, and Turner, not to mention the fact that T.J. Warren, the best player in the bubble, is out. So for that reason, I simply just think that Indiana is going to kind of roll over for this game. And I think Houston, after such an embarrassing showing yesterday, losing by 18 points in the front end of a back-to-back, uh, they did bench some players and they rested a bunch of guys. The game turned out to be a blowout in the second half. I think the Rockets have a lot of value here at minus eight, and I think that they could easily win this game by double digits, considering the fact that they have won each of, the, of, their, each of their last two wins have come by at least 16 points. The team, when they win, they tend to win in blowout fashion. Indiana seems like a prime candidate to get blown out here in this relatively meaningless game for them. So for that reason, the play of the day here for Wednesday, uh, August 12th, is going to be on the Houston Rockets minus eight, which is available at plus 100 on Fox Bet. That's an installment of Scott's selections here for Wednesday, August 12th. It'll look to all of you in respect to bets today. Bye, everyone.